Good evening. I am Jan Manolis, President of the League of Women's Voters of Central Yavapai County. I am pleased to welcome everyone to this virtual candidate forum for the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors for Districts 1, 2, and 5. I would like to thank those candidates who accepted our invitation to participate in this forum. I'd also like to remind everyone to vote in the primary election. Yavapai County is doing an excellent job providing voter access through mail-in and in-person voting. Early voting starts tomorrow, July 8th, and election day is August 4th. This virtual forum is hosted by the League of Women Voters for Central Yavapai County in partnership with Yavapai College Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, better known as OLLI. We thank OLLI for providing the Zoom technology for tonight's meeting. A little bit about the League. We are a trusted grassroots organization with the mission of educating voters to preserve our democracy. While we never endorse or oppose a candidate, we are directly involved in informing the public of important issues that keep our community strong. As a League member, I am proud to be part of the local, state, and national League leadership highlighting issues that directly affect our community. And if you're interested in learning more about us, I would encourage you to visit our website at lwbcyc.org. We'd like to recruit you, women and men, to support us in our work. And now I'm pleased to introduce Bonnie McMahon, our local league director of voter services and your moderator for this evening. Thank you, Bonnie. Great, thank you, Jan. I would like to now introduce our team. We have Ellie Lamark, who is our secretary for the league, and she is also our technical support this evening and our timekeeper. We have Terry Fernati, who is our first vice president and program director. And of course, you met Jan, who is our president, and she will be uh, pushing our slides this evening. So I definitely want to thank all of you for coming this evening and joining us. Um, the purpose of the forum is to uh, is for the audience to get to hear from the candidates in terms of uh, why they want to be county supervisor. It is an opportunity for citizens to ask questions of the candidates about issues that are important to them. The goal of this forum is to provide that information so to the voters so that they may make an educated decision when it comes, mm -hmm. comes time to cast a ballot. Over the past few weeks, we have requested questions from the citizens of Yavapai County, which have been received Bonnie, you're muted. Yeah. Did you hear any of that? Just no, about the last again. minute, we didn't get anything. Oh, well, how do you like that? I think I might have pressed my space bar. Anyway, it was brilliant. It was the best speech ever. Uh, but anyway, so thank you, Harry. But we're brought here to, uh, you know, the questions have been vetted. Uh, candidates did not receive the questions in advance. Um, you know, this is a way for us to get educated uh, on each of the, the positions and, and your positions being known. Um, and I do want to say that uh, James Gregory, who had RSVP, he's not able to make it this evening. So the format for the audience, it will be three parts. The first part will be opening statements. Each candidate will have two minutes for their opening statement and to introduce themselves to the audience. And then alphabetically, we will continue to go through. Each candidate will be given one minute to answer the question. Every candidate will have the same question. Uh, we will rotate through. Um, in terms of the timing, we will not cut you off in the middle of a sentence, but Ellie, can you do our famous ding? So at 15 seconds, and that is a wine bottle. You're muted, but so Ellie, you wanna stay unmuted the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it'll be one ding for the wine bottle and then three dings for the end of the end of the sentence. And then there are closing remarks. The candidates will have two minutes to give their final remarks on why they want to serve as the Board of Supervisors. Uh, in terms of housekeeping, we ask the candidates, candidates stay muted until it's your turn to speak. The audience members will remain muted throughout. Um, 
you guys are all seasoned professionals in this, but I will say it so because it happened on live TV a couple of times. You want to make sure that your camera doesn't see something that it shouldn't see, right? We all have heard those stories. Maybe it's urban legend. But anyway, um, so you guys all look great on, on screen. And without further ado, we will start with introductions. And the first person to uh, introduce herself is Brandy Bateman. She's on, she, you need to mute her. Uh, you do need to interact with it. I'm talking to Terry. There you go. Oh. So she's muted. There, it just kept asking me to unmute and then I would unmute. We're good, oh, thank you. Okay. So much. <laughs> all right, so now we start the time. out together. No, so sorry. good evening and thank you all so much for putting this forum on. Thank you for allowing me to come in uh, a little bit late notice this evening. I, I certainly do appreciate that. I'm Brandi Bateman and I'm a candidate for Yavpai County Board of Supervisors for District 2. I'm a lifelong Republican. I was raised right here in Yavapai County and I raised my family here. I have three beautiful children and seven lovely grandchildren. I have a strong commitment to serving others and to serving my community, which is what this job is all about. So I currently serve as the board president for the Beaver Creek School District, also serve as a member of the Copper Canyon Fire and Medical Governing Board. I have served as a member of the Yavapai College Verde Campus Dean's Advisory Committee and currently the president of the Clark Del Verde Kiwanis Group, which is committed to serving the youth in our community. I volunteer as a trainer for Kids at Hope, teaching that all children are capable of success with no exceptions. I'm also a member of Matt Force Steering Committee, striving to eliminate substance abuse and its effects. I strongly believe that leaders should serve the people. I've been working in government leadership for about the past seven years and specifically with this Yavapai County Board of Supervisors for more than the past two years. And during that time, I've been building relationships with state and federal legislative partners. And it's those relationships that are really gonna be integral to giving us capacity to move forward those meaningful legislations that will benefit our communities. I have an extensive understanding of this job and its unique ability to serve the people. Um, I also have experience as a small business owner. I owned and operated a very successful business in the Verde Valley. I opened a restaurant just before the downturn of the economy in 2007. And despite the economic hardships at that time, my business thrived. Um, I understand the challenges a business owner faces. District 2, I've said it before and I'll say it again, has been well served for the past 16 years. And I absolutely desire to pick up that torch of providing service, resources, and answers to my communities and doing the good work and the hard work is a priority for me and partnership is the strength of that success. Thank you all. Thank you, Brandy. Next we have Wiley. Hello everybody. Thank you for having me on, I enjoyed getting the invitation look forward to it my name is wiley klein i'm running for district two supervisor i was born and raised in gila county just next door i'm a fourth generation arizona native retired law enforcement when i retired in 2001 i moved over to the verde valley to help build the four-lane highway between cottonwood and sedona so i spent a few months in construction here i've worked construction for the past 19 years in just about everything heating and cooling framing roofing dirt work just about everything and anywhere which i think that gives me a unique ability to look at different areas in the county and problems that we may be having i'm married have three children a granddaughter grandson on the way come august 7th he'll be here not sure what his name is but we're looking forward to it i um decided to run because I don't feel that our current Board of Supervisors is serving the communities well. 
I think they're overlooking a lot of things. I certainly think they're not being fiscally responsible. All due respect to the current supervisors that are on this or on the forum. I don't feel that bonding money and raising property taxes is the way to go. I'm opposed to property taxes or any tax increase unless it's absolutely the last thing we can do. I mean, it has to be a last resort, not a first. I think we need to tighten our belts a lot. I think that there's a lot of room for improvement within the county. I think there's a lot of areas that we can cut spending and save money. Certainly we can plan ahead and be a little more fiscally responsible. I'm against the Verde Connect and I'm also against the new judicial complex they're building. Even though I am retired law enforcement and I do support our law enforcement and EMS 100%. I think that was two minutes. I didn't hear the bottle, but I saw her waving it. <laughs> Maybe that's what we have to do. I don't know. She was waving it in the screen, so I don't it's know. It's happy hour, or it's your time's up, um, or she needs to know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Wiley. Sherry? Thank you. Uh, my name is Sherry Hanna, and I am running for the Uphike County Board of Supervisors District 1. I'm uh, running for this position because of my dedication to the area its people, and because I want to preserve our precious culture for future generations that live in Yavapai County. I have lived in Yavapai County, in Prescott, actually, since 1963. I grew up here, uh, went to school here, married John Hanna, who unfortunately uh, passed away in 2013. He was a Prescott police officer and former Prescott City Councilman. Uh, we had three children together, and I currently have 11 grandchildren uh, who all still live in Prescott. So I'm so fortunate to have my family uh, here with me in the Prescott area. My uh, son and son-in-law are with the Prescott Police Department, and my other son is a fireman and a hotshot. Um, I have been a lifelong Republican. I believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I believe, also believe in fiscal uh, management and support the Second Amendment. In January and February, I stood before the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors to advocate for Yavapai County becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary county. I am also running with fresh ideas, commitment, and energy to keep Yavapai County strong. I also want to bring a better balance to the Board of Yavapai County Supervisors. I am not just talk. With my community service, I have had many, uh, belong to many civic organizations throughout my life and uh, so much so community to, uh, contributed to the community that I was nominated for Prescott Area Leadership Woman of the Year in 2017. So, um, I want to continue to use my civic involvement, experience, and common sense. So as um, I also support law enforcement and uh, want to be able to keep you and our county safe. So this has been a difficult um, campaign season with the COVID-19. So I want to thank the League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity to speak to our constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Next, we have Steve. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, putting on the forum. Uh, I love Ollie, as uh, you guys probably know, I supported that on the college board. It's, we're, you know, College is one of the few community college in the United States, and specifically Arizona, that actually still has an Ollie program. And uh, I know people love it. They love it in Prescott, but you know, they really love it in Verde Valley too. Uh, so it, I'm, real, I'm real happy with that. I'm running for District 5. I was elected uh, for District 5 uh, governing board uh, by 70% of the vote. I campaigned on education, uh, reasonable taxes. So there were times we had to raise taxes, uh, but like Wiley, there was no choice. Um, and after doing all the research, uh, that was uh, what we needed to do to keep the college alive and keep the doors open. I, like Wiley, I don't support the jail. Uh, and I don't support the new tax hike. I uh, have been working with the Department of Public Safety. I got our crime report, the last one published. I can't see why we would want a jail. 
Uh, I've gotten information from the adult probation department. I'm looking at those numbers and I'm talking to our under sheriff, which will be our new sheriff come January to set up a tour and kind of work through those problems. Uh, but I want to see the data. I don't do anything without looking at the research, looking at uh, what makes sense to do. I'm a 50 year plus government service from the Army to federal government, state, county government. Uh, Prescott wouldn't hire me, but I didn't apply, so um, I could have added that to my list too. As a business owner, I have offices in Cottonwood, Prescott, and Sedona, and I'm a lifelong Republican. Go to Steve Irwin for a supervisor. We'd love to have you look at it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. So next we have John Lutz. He's muted. Oh. You're still right. muted, yes. John. Good, we got right. it. Oh, okay. um, I've unmuted three times and get remuted when someone else pushes the unmute button. But anyway, that happens in these Zoom meetings. But thank you to the League of Women Voters for inviting me to this forum. Um, I uh, think you're a fantastic organization and it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to all get to know each other. Um, I have, a, have been a Whiskey Row businessman for uh, just about 40 years. I came here in uh, March of 1981 to open the McMahon's Furniture on Whiskey Row at the uh, age of 26. And uh, to this day, I have in the uh, Sam, I still occupy the Sam Hills Hardware Building with uh, the Van Gogh's Your Art Gallery is my current interest with my partners. So um, I feel very fortunate to have uh, lived an amazing life in Prescott and uh, gotten to know the area and just love the area and I have a lot of passion about Prescott, Yapai County and all of its people. So um, I, I had graduated from NAU with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Forestry. Um, and uh, at that time I kind of minored in Grand Canyon hiking. Uh, I think I've done uh, 54 backpacking trips into the Grand Canyon. And uh, I've continued my hiking here in, uh, in Prescott with our wonderful uh, trail system. And I feel like I, I know the ground, I know, I, I know the land, I know the ways, I, 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 I know our county, and I've been chatting with people for 40 years on Whiskey Row, so I feel like I know the public. Um, I uh, am the only Democrat in the room, um, I believe, and uh, I'm proud of it. And I do think it's a time for a change is uh, one of the reasons why I'm running for Yavakai County Board of Supervisors in District 1. Um, I, uh, I think that one, one party rule has not really helped Yavapai County have an open government that takes into account the needs of all of the citizens. And I would like to represent all of the citizens of uh, Yavapai County on the Board of Supervisors. And I feel like I'm uh, well prepared to do that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next, we have Mary Mallory. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I am Mary Mallory, and I want to thank you very much for having this forum. It is very nice for all of us to be able to get together any way possible. So um, about 20 years ago, I came here to Yavapai County on a job transfer with uh, Albertson's Markets, um, which are no longer, of course, as you know, in business. And so um, I also was elected into the town of Prescott Valley for a councilwoman in 2011, and then I was reelected in 2016. Um, I have served this community now as a public figure for almost 10 years. I was appointed to the Board of Supervisors. It'll be a year actually this July 15th that I have been on the board as a county supervisor. I have a wonderful husband. Um, his name is Kirk Mallory. I'm sure that many of you have met him and seen him. We have four sons and nine grandchildren. And um, two of our sons have served in the military. One of our sons actually just got home about three weeks ago. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, I have absolutely loved living here in Yavapai County. I am a person that serves the community in every way possible. I serve all the people. 
I am a Republican, but I do see us as a community to serve the betterment of all. So with that being said, I, I thank you very much again for this opportunity and look forward to a very nice evening. Bonnie, you were muted, so I guess you want me to go ahead and speak now. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? This is what happens. I just have to explain this. So this little piece of paper with how I know what order to go in, I put it on the keypad and it mutes me. So okay. it's not going to go there. All right, I can read left. Thank so. you. And you are the one who, who coaches no, no me. No problem. So I appreciate that. So now, Ellie, we can start Harry's time. Hello, everyone. My name is Harry Oberg, and I'm running for Yapai County Board of Supervisors, District 1. And I want to thank uh, the League of Women Voters and Ollie for uh, hosting this tonight. I think that's a real opportunity for us to get to meet the public. I'm a longtime resident of Yapai County, and I come from a ranching background here. My dad got here in 1929 and has worked on many ranches throughout Yapai County. I was raised in Prescott, went to Prescott Public Schools and graduated from Prescott High School in 1965. Go Badgers. I'm sure you all about, know about that. Um, in 1967, I uh, enlisted in the Army and I spent uh, two tours serving in Vietnam as a helicopter pilot. I eventually finished up a 33-year military career, retiring as a Colonel on active duty and as a uh, Brigadier General in the Army National Guard. I recently served as the uh, mayor of Prescott and I've been on numerous uh, uh, boards for local uh, activities and organizations in, uh, in Prescott area. Some of my accomplishments as, accomplishments as mayor um, included building the, um, the new, uh, initiating the building of the new uh, airport terminal, uh, working uh, with 29 mayors on the uh, public uh, safety pension system that was, uh, needs a lot of reform and improving the care of uh, uh, sober living homes. We had about 200 homes here that were unlicensed and I was able to improve the care there and uh, eventually got it down to 34 <laughs> licensed properly operating homes. I served as, um, or serving as your uh, supervisor, I, I would put my emphasis in looking at uh, restoring our economic prosperity preserving our scarce resources, which are water, wildlife, forest, and open space, sustaining our county services, improving our uh, transportation infrastructure, and preserving our Western heritage. We have a great county. I've had a long history here, and I want to do everything I can to continue to improve our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Next, we have Jody Rooney. Hi, Jody. Muted, Terry. It, 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 we fight over who's going to unmute us, I think. It isn't working. That's weird. So we go. We got you. Not okay. partnering with yeah. you, Gary. We're good. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jody Rooney. And I just want to let you know that I'm running for County Supervisor District 2. I'm a Republican and have lived here since 2006 with my husband, Casey. I'm a graduate of the competitive Flynn Brown Fellowship, and that's a program for experienced leaders here in Arizona. Personally, I take action in my, for my appreciation for education, and I serve on multiple boards, but one particular one I like is the Gladys Gardner Teacher Scholarship. And that's to help us get teachers here in Yavapai County, which we really need. I also uh, um, have gotten the award for a woman of the year for transportation for, from the Phoenix chapter of Women Transportation Seminar. I'm a charter member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Piestawa Peak chapter. So I did work my way up, starting in the lower levels into leadership positions at the Arizona Department of Transportation, and we call that ADOT. And from my experience, I have also 
uh, had been the administrator for, in the Prescott Urbanized Area, for the Central Yavapai Metropolitan Planning Organization. That's all about our transportation. Now, I have equally enjoyed a, a career with the Illinois Department of Transportation, and I do have extensive experience when it comes to that because of my career. I've been able to achieve results. My detailed knowledge of the transportation means that I have the experience to capture the funding and keep it so that we can build our projects. I am demonstrated in that area. And one of my bosses actually said, Jody, I'm gonna give it to you because I know that you'll get it done. Now, my husband Casey and I uh, have uh, been here in Stone Ridge and Prescott Valley since it was about uh, December, 2006. And we have worked across Yavapai County. I'm a first generation college graduate I'm a former councilwoman for Prescott Valley, and I am hoping that you will look to hire me as your next county supervisor. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jody. Next, we have Brian Silvernail. Well, good evening. Um, thank you to the women voters for hosting us here and having some um, my name is Brian Stolmail I'm a year resident of County. I'm only 40 years old so basically like mom. Um, I believe he's I having network problems. For, yeah Brian Brian Sheriff's office uh, I've been there for the last 20 years. I'm a lieutenant, a bureau commander in a jail. So, uh, so Brian, we're having some network trouble with, with your connection. Sorry? We're having a little bit of network trouble with your connection. Um, can you hear are, me? Are you, I can hear you now, but you weren't very... Clear. Um, go ahead and I'm turn, unmuted, turning off you your video. Um, then we should be able to hear you clear. It'll free up some of your bandwidth. Yeah, I'm, I'm here and I can see and hear you. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be helping. Um, hmm. um, is there any way you can uh, plug into a physical network connection if you're on Wi-Fi? No, he's frozen. You might have what? We might have just lost him. Can you Not really. Maybe he should just call in. Would that help? Yeah, that, that, that might be the best person to ask. Yes. Ellie, do you have a phone number for him to call in on? There should be a there should be a call in number the with the invitation email. Okay. Any better? Yeah. Well, you hear me now. I I can see and hear everyone else. Bye. Summer. Yeah, Ellie. I don't see a phone number on the most recent link that you sent. I will email him. Why don't you continue with the other candidates? Okay. He's the last and one. I will email him uh, previous. Uh, I don't. Uh, could somebody do the timing here for a minute or two? Yeah, it's it's no good. It's all in my home here. All right. So how about we? Um, okay. So why don't we start with the questions? And then we'll come back to Brian when he uh, will go through and he can uh, do his intro and then answer the question. Does that sound fair? 
Okay, so Jan, if you wanna put up the first question. I need someone to share the screen. Dan, you should be able to do that. Um, I don't have anything that shows me. Um, uh, have you got a little green square that says share screen on the bottom toolbar? No, let me. Uh. I'm trying to find it right now. So if you hear me on Grind Island. I think we're still hearing him from from ages ago. And he's muted, yeah. So should I just disconnect him? Uh, no, then you might have trouble rejoining. Okay, all right. So Jan, can you share the screen or shall I go ahead and read the question? Go ahead and read the question. Um, I do not see where to share the screen. Um, I have not actually had speaker view. I mean, I just see one page. No, I'm not sure what's going on. So go if you go to speaker view, but I'll, I'll start with the question. So, um, so again, I'm not, I'm not muted. I didn't put the paper on my keyboard. Okay, so, um, so now we're gonna begin the round robin. So the, the first question, there is a great deal of interest in the Board of Supervisors race as evidenced by the 18 candidates vying for five positions but many people are not certain what a supervisor does. How would you describe your role as a county supervisor? And Wiley, you are up first, and you can unmute yourself. There, perfect. There, am I unmuted? Yes. So now the timer starts. Now the time, okay. The Board of Supervisors is a very important position. As everybody knows, you're the government for the county. You oversee, I think it's about 40 departments, approximately just over 1,700 employees. You're also in charge for the taxes, whether you raise them or decrease them for the county. Not many people know that. You're also placed on very various boards throughout the state as well as nationally to represent the county. Oh, it went away. There we go. Okay, you threw me there. All right, but as I was saying, it's a very important position. And the main thing that I feel with the county supervisor is you have to represent the people of the county, not just your district, but of the county. You have to listen to what they're saying because you work for them. They do not work for you. They're my employer. So if I don't do a good job in four years, I'm getting fired. And I certainly don't want that. But to me, it's the most important thing. You have to speak for the people of the county as well as your district. And right now, I don't think our current board is listening to what the people have to say. They've made some decisions that were absolutely against what people were saying. So we need somebody that will represent the people and be the voice for them. And that's gonna be me for district two. Great, thank you very much, Wiley. So next, um, I, I can reread the question, but the question is up on the screen. So next we have Sherry, Hannah, for uh, one minute to answer, how would you describe your role as county supervisor? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, yes, the role of the Yadpai County Board of Supervisors is to oversee the financing and administration of the county. They also uh, appoint the department heads and are responsible for taxes. And uh, so my role, I look at my role as a Yavapai County Board of Supervisor. There are five districts and each one, each representative represents their district. So in order to fully represent your constituents, you have to be out in the district. My district one is urban and rural, so it's very diverse. And to understand the concerns and the lifestyles of uh, the rural and the urban way of life that's in my district. It takes a supervisor that's going to have to be hands-on, like I said, very visible. And then also knowing the whole 
position of the county because the board does come together to make decisions for the county as a whole. So not only do you have to be in touch with your district, you have to know what's going on throughout the county and be able to work and oversee the departments and work in conjunction with the other <clears throat> board of supervisors to make good solid decisions in the best benefit of the county. Great, thank you very much, Sherry. So next we have Steve Irwin and the question is on the screen. How would you describe your role as a county supervisor? Thank you, great question by the way. Uh, I think a lot of people don't know. So there's no town manager, so the board of supervisors there's no county manager, so the Board of Supervisors is a county manager, and they have almost total control over the unincorporated areas of the county. Uh, there's nine other elected officials that we have, uh, we work with, but we don't have control over uh, other than uh, financing and budgeting. So the job really comes down to representing the, what the people want, uh, control growth, reasonable taxes, lowering taxes, um, if we need a new jail, then we have to prove it. And so I believe the real thing is, is interfacing and working well with other supervisors and other uh, political people that we have to work with, but really get, getting out and seeing what the public uh, expects of us and then filling through. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Next, we have John Lutz. How would you describe your role as county supervisor? I, I would describe my role as, as county supervisor as to represent the people of the county and what their wants and needs and, the, and to provide them with the uh, services and the infrastructure that are required for a uh, uh, life in Yavapai County. Um, I feel like I've uh, made great connections with people uh, all of my life in talking to people. I feel like I would work together with the other supervisors uh, to come to uh, great compromises that, you know, would recognize the, the, the most number of voters in, 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 the, in the county. Um, I I feel like I would offer a fresh voice in county government that the people would feel was always accessible to them. And I think that we have to do so with, uh, you know, more accountability and more transparency in the decisions that are made. I think it's the county, I, I think of the county supervisors as the U.S. Senate of the county. Um, they have control, you know, we would have, you know, and I would join in having control over a, a tremendous, you know, a couple hundred million dollar budget, which you know needs to be spent just to serve the people, and that's what I would look to do. Great, thank you, John. Next, we have Mary Mallory. Yeah, so you know, since I am the county supervisor for District Five, um, as a county supervisor, I work very closely with our county administrator, Phil Bordeaux and the other department managers of the county, which are about 17 department directors in the county. We oversee the property taxes. We oversee the expense and the needs of the county. Um, we make sure that we keep our community safe in regards to making sure that our safety, our sheriff's department has the money that they need. And the other departments when it comes to our roads, our infrastructure, our flood control. So we have about 2000 people that we work through with, and we have a lot of a process to deal with. And then every two weeks we do come together and you need to be a person that can work with everybody. So when we get together every two weeks, it isn't just about District 5 or District 1 or District 2. It's about the community as a whole, the county, which is a population of about 235,000 people that I look forward to serving. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Next, we have uh, Harry Oberg. Yes, the supervisors pass resolutions and enact ordinances and regulations very similar to uh, the councils of Prescott and PV. 
The Board of Supervisors oversees services in the county, such as road repair, libraries, law enforcement, community health, and fire. Uh, the board develops annual budgets to provide for these services, sets the property tax rate for the budget, and then collects the property tax and executes those services. One of my concerns is many people in the municipalities that I talk to do not express a concern about county government because they do not feel it has a direct impact on them. They're only interested in their own city or town council actions and resolutions that they think affect them. For example, the property owners of Prescott PV, uh, Chino Valley, pay property taxes for county services throughout the county, but I don't think they look at it that way. So I feel it's very important that our citizens should be fully aware of all the business undertaken by the Board of Supervisors and to get a full understanding of how their taxes are being spent. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Jody Rooney. Well, I think anyone who takes on this job has to be ready to work over 50 hours a week. And that's what I have done in my career. Now, we as a county supervisor have to work with other governmental bodies and I'm used to doing that. You also would appoint directors for some of the departments. There are members of counties boards and commissions such as planning and zoning that you would appoint. There's also a board of directors for special districts, which I did, I served uh, as a councilwoman. And you have special board meetings and your regular board meetings. And uh, I've been going to those, they're like every um, first Wednesday and third Wednesday of the month. Right now, everything's online though. Now our board members also as a supervisor approve all of the zoning and use permits and that can get pretty tough. So you better have a thick skin. Also the most important I think is that you are responsible and I have done this in the past as being um, taking care of finance and administration for government. You have approval over the department budgets. You have to know when to increase it, when to cut it. And you also primarily govern the tax rates. I'm prepared to do that and have experience in several of these things. It would be a next natural step for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jody. Next, so Brian, are you on via audio? So I'm gonna- Much unmute. better. Oh, sorry. Zach, well, this, this is me. So, is that you, Brian? This is me, this is Brian. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So, okay. Um, wait, just, so our, for our timekeeper, uh, we will give Brian two minutes for his introduction, and then we will go into the question, Brian, which I... I, I think he, did he, Brian, did you do your introduction or no? no. That's where it got off. Well, I started there. it, but that's when, when you guys lost me. Okay. I couldn't hear you. So, let's give Brian two minutes. And then I will read the question for him. Okay, well, hello and thank you for hosting. Um, I apologize for the technical difficulties that uh, I'm having. I can see and hear you all just fine, but I don't know why you can't hear me. Um, my name is Brian Silvernail. I am a 39 year resident of Yaupai County and I'm only 40 years old. So I've been here most of my life. Um, I'm a product of Prescott and Yaupai County education. Um, I live and work here. I've raised my family here. I've been married for 20 years. I have three kids um, and they are all products of Yavapai County and Prescott education as well. Um, I am a 20-year veteran of the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. I'm a lieutenant and a bureau commander within our Detention Services Bureau. I, in my roles at the Sheriff's Office, I serve on multiple committees um, in looking at how to revamp our criminal justice system or reform our criminal justice system. Um, and uh, I take a very active role in the efficiency and uh, productivity of our sheriff's office. Um, in the, the years that I've been there, I've received many awards and uh, uh, the latest, I've been the crisis officer of the year um, for a, uh, um, a group called David's Hope. And, um, I serve on our Yavapai Mental Health and Justice Coalition. I once was a, a member of our Corp Local Retirement Board. Um, I serve on our Prescott Area Shelter Services Board. And I am an active member of Heights Church where my wife and I serve in uh, 
youth and young adult ministries. Um, if I'm elected, I plan on eliminating wasteful spending. I plan on addressing our county's extremely high turnover rates. And I plan on creating a sustainable growth model. And I think that's about the end of my two minutes. So I'll stop my introduction. Yes. So now, um, do you see the screen? Because we can see you. So do you want me to reread yep, the question? No, I see the, qu the screen and the question. And uh, I'm prepared to, Perfect. to answer it. Great. All right, so what does the what does my role as a county supervisor, what would it be? Well, short answer is the Board of Supervisors is the governing body that or uh, that oversees the operation of the county government. It's similar to a city council as, as Harry kind of touched on. Um, the board has legislative, executive, and quasi-judicial powers. Um, under those legislative powers, the board passes and repeals laws. They call them ordinances. They, uh, as some people said, they set um, uh, declarations and, and such. Um, under their executive power, they oversee departments um, uh, and appoint department heads and manage the budget of the county. Um, in their quasi-judicial powers, in some, in some cases, they're the arbiter, or, um, of decisions made by some commissions underneath that board. So it's a, it's a big job and it's one that uh, I think that my skill sets working with the sheriff's office and in county government, I'm suited for. Great. Thank you very much, Brian. And we have Brandy Bateman. How would you describe your role as a county supervisor? Great, thank you, that's a wonderful question. So as everyone has stated, the role of county government is to provide resources to all areas of the county. We develop and maintain parks, libraries, roads, health clinics. We uh, support our law enforcement, development related services, building and safety permitting, all of those wonderful things. I think the thing that has been missed, however, is one of the most unique things about what a county supervisor does is they go down to the legislature and they say, I have a community that's having a problem with this. For instance, last year we were dealing heavily with the impact of Airbnb and we had some communities in our area that it was a huge problem. And so we took those problems, we went down to the legislature, we worked with those legislators and said, we need to create those statutes that will give our local governments the ability to have local control and give the power back to those people. And so we go down and we, we work with our legislators and that's what I've been doing for the past two and a half years is building those relationships. So it's, it's not a cold call, but it's a warm relationship I have with them. So when those issues come up in our community, I can go down to the legislature and say, here's the problem, how do we solve it? and make it a benefit to all of Yavapai County. Great, thank you very much, Brandy. So next question, which maybe some of you got a sneak peek at. What is your superpower for dealing with people and organizations? And this one, if you wanna be a little bit shorter, unless you're truly a superhero. Um, anyway, so we will start with Sherry Hanna today. With the, with thank this you. Question. Uh, my superpower uh, has been what it always has been when belonging to all the organizations and um, boards that I belong to is my drive and my energy that I have to get out there to um, make contact with the people to find out what their issues are and also to, to have the ability to work with people, to bring people together. We work with uh, people that have different ideas, different stances on issues, and that's where my strength is. That we need to work to peop with people to bring them together so we can make decisions that benefit and will help everyone. And that's where my success has been. I've been out in the, my district for two years now on my own time and meeting with the people. And that's where my drive to serve the people comes from and my commitment to serve them, uh, to show them that I, I am uh, supporting them and what they need to do and have done in their area to help make their, bring their quality of life up. And so that's um, what I've been doing my whole life and um, I will continue to do that. Great, thank you, Sherry. Next we have Steve. Thanks, um, superpower. I don't 
I don't know. You know, what I like to do is a lot of research. Uh, I like to be really smart about the topic of the meeting. Before I go to the meetings, I'll study everything. I come very prepared. Uh, my other superpower is I love listening to people and developing personal relationships. Uh, that's how I was on the college board, how I am in my everyday business. Uh, I like to say I get business by referrals because of the quality of work that I do and the amount of time I put into it. Uh, so listening and research and understanding uh, what, uh, what the problem is or what the um, suggestion is. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Steve. John, what is your superpower? My superpower has always been hard work. Um, I've always, uh, whenever I've gone into work with an organization or an employer, I've gone in and, and showed that I could work uh, and wasn't afraid to get my hands dirty doing almost anything. And um, that uh, has always uh, wound up uh, with me being elevated into leadership roles in, in whatever I did. And I feel like that uh, people, by getting your hands dirty and working with others and showing that uh, you understand the nitty gritty of a situation is when people elevate you to a place where you make decisions. Um, I, I feel like that uh, my uh, education gave me great structure for a, a role like this. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you know how the, the forestry program works at NAU, but your, your first semester, you learn how to measure all different kinds of things in the environment from hydrology to tree rings to uh, uh, counting animal scat. But, you, you know, and then your second semester, they give you 270 acres and you go out and you actually do all those measurements. And your third semester, you come back and you write a land management plan for that area. And I feel like that is a start in my education, just trained me perfectly for what this job requires. Great. Thank you, John. Mary? I think you're muted, Mary. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank we'll start you. your time now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You know, um, my superpower is basically I am extremely passionate about everything I do. I put my heart and my soul into every little bit of this community and the people that live in it. You know, as serving on the town council for Prescott Valley as a councilwoman, in my first year I brought an event that is still going on now in its ninth year. I worked with the community. It's the Prescott Valley Healing Field. It's a beautiful, beautiful event. 3,000 American flags, eight feet tall, remembering all those that we lost on 9-11. I mean, that is like who I am. I'm all about the community. I am all about making positive movement, uplifting the community, uplifting the people, supporting all of our law enforcement, our first responders, our military, um, just loving everything that we have and protecting it and standing up for it. I will always stand up for this country, for this state and for this county. And for those that put their life on the line for us every day, I am right there standing with them and supporting them. And that is my superpower. That's who I am. Loving everything that we are blessed to have in America. Thank you, Mary. Harry, what is your superpower? Well, my superpower is I was uh, selected to be an uh, Army IG. And you're selected for that position due to your leadership, your professionalism your ethics and your moral standing. Um, one of the things that we have to do is, of course, investigations. Uh, we also have to do organizational analysis of operations and maintenance, and also helping soldiers with many of their uh, personal problems. So that was probably the most rewarding thing, and I think a lot of these things have direct application right now to uh, being a county supervisor. But basically, uh, the three things that we learned to do was uh, First of all, effective listening. A lot of people don't do that very well. And I, I know when you're out dealing with people that you have to kind of fully understand the problem. The second thing you have to do is understand uh, what are the true facts, because many people t think they know the facts and they really don't. And when you start looking into it, you have to find out what that is, because you can only make proper solutions when you have all the facts. 
So I think my time as uh, an IG is going to serve me well in the county. Thank you, Harry. Jody, what is your superpower? When I was serving in one of my leadership positions at Ada, I worked with over 120 cities, counties, towns, and tribes. There would be times where people would be hot because things weren't working right. And what would happen is I would get a call, Jody, please go see what needs to be done. So this particular community, they had federal dollars to be able to get a project done in their central business district but they didn't want it looking like an ADOT project. They wanted it look like a town project. And so I had to listen, let them vent and get through the heat of the situation and all the emotion to get to that point of them telling me, we really want it to look like what we look like. Once I could get there, then I knew what I could do for them because the feds had standards, but there, was a, there were a few things we could do. So by listening, knowing what was possible, bringing them part of the way, and we came part of the way, we got a solution that met them where they needed to be. The feds were happy and we got that project on the road. Thank you. Brian, what is your superpower? Um, my superpower is four things. First, being strong leadership. Second is my ability to collaborate with others. The third is my desire and drive to bring efficiency wherever it is that I'm at and what it, what it is that I'm doing. And the last one is my servant's heart. And I think when you merge all those things together, you get somebody who's effective, somebody who achieves the goal that they set out to, do, to achieve. That's my superpower. Thank you, Brian. Brandy, what is your superpower? So I would have to say that my superpower is commitment. It's my commitment to service. It's my commitment to the people of District 2 and Yavapai County. It's my commitment to making the best decisions for our communities. And it's my commitment to servant leadership. Um, you know, you never lose sight of the ultimate goal that you focus on the, the short-term objectives while you're doing it because you're committed to that long-term goal. Um, and lastly, I would say that I'm committed and capable of hitting the ground running with two years of experience of working with the Board of Supervisors in the role that I've had. Great. Thank you. Wiley, what is your superpower for dealing with people and organizations? I have a great one. Like Jody was explaining the problems she was having with her customers in whatever road project. I was in law enforcement. You want to talk about people with problems. I've seen them at their worst. I've seen them at their best. If you can't communicate clearly and understand what their needs are and how to help them, you're in a lot of trouble in that position. Through the years, I've developed the ability to listen, to understand, not respond. That's a big difference in a lot of people. You have to understand what the problems are. I've heard a lot about training and colleges and different things from different candidates. Well, my school is the school of life. And that has taught me how to deal with people, how to understand people, how to get along with people. My best quality is that I can listen to people. I don't need to respond back. I can just listen to them. And that's my superpower. Years of experience of talking and dealing with people at their absolute worst to their absolute best. And that really is a unique quality. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Wiley. So now we're on to the next question. And I will read the question and then you will see the question. So citizens expect that the county can and should play a leadership role with respect to regional issues and water is top of mind for most citizens. How should the county lead the conversation between municipalities in managing the shared resource of water? And Steve Irwin, you are up, and it is one minute answers. Thank you, uh, great question. The uh, water is always a, a big interest. The AMA and, and our water, water Advisory Council helped set the policy on how many wells we could use. Uh, what's going on in, in my district, we're converting agricultural uh, water use to residential, so we're using a whole lot less water than we did 20 years ago. 
Uh, so I would say we need reasonable, sustained growth that the community can support. Uh, so that's how I would do it. I would work with ADQE. I would work with our advisory council uh, and work with the county and the, and the local municipalities to make sure that our 10-year plan, which is coming up to do the redo here, I believe, in, the, in either this year or next year, uh, so that 10-year plan is going to play a very important role in how we do our shared resources. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. John, how should the county lead the conversation between municipalities in managing the shared resource of water? You know, I've been talking to a lot of voters and uh, most, all the voters, not all, but most voters that I talk to uh, are very concerned about the future of water in our Yavapai County. Um, it is uh, largely believed by the public that the water certificates that are traded with the act, within the active water management area uh, that are issued by the state uh, don't represent real water. And um, I really, really believe that we need to start uh, doing a lot more measuring of what water is actually coming out of the ground uh, throughout the state of Arizona. And so this is one of the places where I feel like it's the County Board of Supervisors job to go to the state legislature and lobby for changes in the state's water policy. The policy that we're dealing with now is 40, 50 years old. Bruce Babbitt wrote it, he doesn't believe in it any longer. Um, I think that a lot more local control of water needs to be released to the counties and the counties need to manage that among the municipalities. So I believe that we need to know how many straws are in the ground. Uh, we need to know how much is coming out of all those straws in the ground. And we need to uh, use the facts to, facts and science to come up with a water plan that's sustainable for our future. Thank you, John. Mary, how should the county lead the conversation between municipalities in managing our shared resource of water? Well, thank you very much. And as a county supervisor representing District 5, um, you know, I play a role, we play a role as a partnership with our local cities and towns. Um, we believe in local control. We partner with them up on for the Upper Verde River Coalition. We contribute $40,000 yearly out of the county to uphold and take care of those issues with our water here. You know, we are a partner on many things. And so, um, and of course, a lot of the water with the county is really um, regulated by state statute. So the best role that the county can play, a county supervisor can play, which is what we do and have done, is to continue partnering with our local cities and towns and work with them as we move forward in manageable growth that we truly do have a lot of growth going on, but manageable, management growth is what the key is. So, thank you. Great, thank you, Mary. Harry, how should the county lead the conversation? The water management in Arizona is extremely complex, and I think water policy is codified in state law, and changes to water policy require action of the legislature. On a more local level, the county basically states it has little to do with water management. However, there are two areas where the county is and should be involved in water policy in my mind. First, in the unincorporated areas of the county, water users receive state water allocation through well permits and only report water usage to the state if the well produces more than 35 gallons per minute. Uh, most wells in the county don't produce 35 gallons per minute, so they are exempt from reporting. The county's primary responsibility in this area is health safety by approving design and placement of septic systems to prevent well or aquifer contamination. The second area is the Prescott Active Management Area, which includes incorporated land such as Prescott and PV and adjacent county property. Um, the effective water management in the AMA, um, the county and municipalities need to work together in collaboration on both conservation measures and developing sound policy to re achieve safe yield uh, by 2025. Thank you, Harry. Jody, 
How should the county lead the conversation regarding management of water? Well, as Mary mentioned, we are already uh, working through the Upper Verde River uh, Watershed Protection Coalition. And she did note too that the county puts money into that. We have had success with that and I wanna see that continue. But that's about bringing everybody to the table. And I think that's very important uh, because if you don't have the right voices at the table, something is going to get missed. So I think we should go forward with that. We do have to keep in mind through the department, um, Arizona Department of Water Resources, that's where a lot of the regulation comes. Uh, as far as um, looking at what we could do together, there's certain things such as stormwater management is really big. There's water, um, harvesting water and conservation, of course. You know, there's a lot of those things. There's no one silver bullet, but it's about working together on those initiatives. And I look forward as we go into the future. I think we're gonna need to be creative. And I know I already work with creative people here in the county. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Jody. Ryan, how should the county lead the oh. conversation? Well, um, so just a little bit of background. I live on two acres that was built in the 1800s and I have a hand dug well that's 13 feet deep. So I, uh, water is, is key to the sustainability of my life and my family of five and my horse and my two dogs. So um, the first thing that I think the county needs to be doing is looking at promoting conservation. That's what I have to do as an individual and I think that that's what we need to do as a county um, to, to be able to address this issue countywide. Second thing I need, I think that we need to do as a county is we need to stop bringing the city water to county parcels. If the city wants to develop county parcels and uh, or the owners of those parcels want to develop them, then they need to be annexed into those cities. Um, what we do when we when we open it up and we bring the the resource there, we promote unsustainable growth, and um, we we tap into that resource more than we should. Those are the, the two things that I think that we need to be doing as a county. Thank you, Brian. Brandy, how do we lead the conversation? Thank you so much. So I think the first thing that we all need to recognize is that um, Yavapai County needs to have the opportunity to be at the table, which is gonna mean creating legislation that gives us the ability to consider water resources as part of uh, our, our approval of developments. And so that's gonna mean going down to the legislature, working with those people, understanding of course that the majority of our legislators are the, the southern part of our state, the, the urban areas of our state, and they're the biggest users of our water. And so they're not likely inclined to give us that ability to say, no, we don't want a development or we wanna change the way development looks. So first and foremost, we have to get ourselves at the table, being able to use water as, as a means of saying, yes, this is our vision for Yavapai County. Great, thank you. Wiley, how, how do we lead the conversation as the county? Thank you. I, um, I just about promise everybody here that I'm the only one that started drilling wells when I was 12 years old. I've worked in the well business off and on my entire life. I, for one, off of the entire panel, have seen people lose their wells because they've gone dry. I've backed the well rig onto several wells to drill them deeper because they're dry. A lot of them out in Brandy's area, out in Rimrock and Beaver Creek. It's very, very, very important that we watch the growth. We have to make it smart and we have to put it where we do have a resource. We can't keep draining our aquifers like we are. And we absolutely have to work with the legislature. We have to get it to where water can be considered on variances, where we can vote no because of the water issues. Until that happens, there's just not a whole lot of control we have. Now we certainly do not need to meter wells like I've heard mentioned or count the straws in the ground or whatever was said and how much is coming out. That is absolutely not an approach to anything. That is pretty much infringing on everybody in the rural areas and we don't wanna do that. But the main thing is conservation. 
we have to watch our water resource. It's not an unlimited supply. It is one of the most valuable resources we have, and we have to guard it. And right now, it's not being looked over. But we have to work closely with all the Your time is, is called, sir. Pardon me? Your time has been called. Oh, thank you. OK. And Sherry. Thank you. Um, as it has been mentioned already, the county does work uh, along as was a founding member of the Upper Verde uh, Watershed Protection Coalition. And, um, you know, the, the county does not set water policy, the right the state does, and the legislature uh, makes the laws that lean towards what the county does. And the cities do um, set water policy that gives them the local control that they need. But I think the main thing is education. We need to con uh, step up our education to the public on you know conservation and what we can do to for rain, rainwater harvesting and better septic systems and reaching safe uh, safe yield on what it takes to do that and water management and we the the Yapai County Board of Supervisors has a legislative liaison who works with the legislature and that should be one of the main things that we um, steer our liaison to work with the legislature is better control or better involvement and regional cooperation with the water um, that we have to, to deal with. And I have been appointed to Mayor Mangarelli's uh, Commission on Sewer and Water for the City of Prescott. So if the legislature ever changes, the time and has been ever change, thank you. Um, yeah, but Pike County will be at the table. Great, thank you. Next question. Jan, there we go. Groundwater pumping to supply new development in Yavapai County is killing the Verde River. The Paulden stream gauge is lower than ever in its recorded history. With respect to the Big Chino Aquifer, would you support the purchase of agricultural conservation easements to maintain the land as working farms and ranches to reduce the demands of groundwater pumping for development? Why or why not? John Lutz, you're up. Well, I believe that as uh, a member of the Board of Supervisors that it be our duty to uh, preserve the treasures of Yaupai County. And I think that the uh, uh, Verde River uh, flowing on the upside of the ground is the last perennial river in, in the state of Arizona. The only one that hasn't been stuck dry, stuck dry is uh, one of our duties. I think that uh, we should work in every way possible to uh, preserve uh, the, the uh, flow of the Verde River. And I think that's gonna involve a lot of difficult decisions and a very complex plan to have work as we go forward and grow. Um, but yes, I would support the purchase of agricultural conservation easements. Um, but I also would support uh, the uh, um, ex expansion of uh, um, uh, the uh, non-irrigation well uh, easements. So I think that could really help a lot. So I think, I think we really need to watch, you know, any changes in, in well water and that new agriculture is, is regulated. They're seeing that all over the state where new agriculture comes in and- like Your time in has been called, thank you. Thank you. Mary. Yes, well, um, we at the county are governed by so many state statutes and very limited when it comes to water. But we do partner, again, at the table with our <coughs> municipalities. So what I could say to you on this is that under the circumstances of having certain statutes that do uh, reduce us from doing many things with water. So first I would have to look at where do we sit as far as state statute goes in regards to this, but I would definitely be at the table to be a partner in understanding what is needed that the other municipalities and are looking at. And that is my answer. Thank you. Harry? Well, I guess there's a couple of things about this I'd like to uh, talk about. First of all, it, it looks like what we're talking about is probably 
uh, commercial or residential land that people are looking at trying to make agricultural conservation easements. Um, again, this could very well get back to Proposition 207, uh, which was a um, bill that was passed, I think, in 2006 by a large margin by the uh, citizen of this uh, state that uh, we couldn't uh, take value from somebody's property. And I think that's what you would find here is that if we go ahead and uh, try and make these agricultural conservation easements and we reduce the value of them, that we have to pay that person for the reduction of the value of his land. The second thing, of course, is where are we going to get the money to purchase this um, agricultural easement? And I obviously that's going to have to come from the taxpayer. So I think I see a couple of issues here that I would really like to look into before I could give a, a better answer on whether this is a good idea. Thank you, Harry. Jody? Well, you know, when I look at the working farms or ranches, I'm, I'm concerned about that because it's like tribal lands. Once they go away, they usually don't come back. Now, certainly we could look at conservation easements. Maybe it, if it was through uh, like a master plan community, you could work with low impact designs and, you know, create maybe some of the rain harvesting systems. But, you know, we have to protect the verde. So the reality is that SRP, Prescott Valley and Prescott are required not to harm the verde. I serve both sides of the mountain and I will see that we honor those agreements. Thank you, Jody. Brian? Okay, so I read this question. I, I'm kind of leaning on the side, and no, I don't think I would support it, and here's why. When you talk about conservation, and you talk about conserving by making it an easement, easement to make a, or to allow this land to be used as working farms and ranches, you, you, I don't think you're conserving very much at all, because really what's happening is on a lot of these working farms and ranches, they're, they're a bigger draw um, on the aquifers than, um, than, than residential uses. I think that I would be more apt to looking at um, expanding the AMA where we can control the water usage or, or the creation of INAs, uh, non-expansion, uh, irrigation non-expansion areas um, in some of these outlying areas over using taxpayer dollars to potentially uh, put yourself in a worse position than you were before. So that's, that's where I'd be at on that. Thank you, Brian. Wiley? There, am I unmuted? It's Brandy. Brandy. Oh, oh Brandy. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you so much. So Sorry. absolutely, we, we need to do, and I'm not saying absolutely that I agree with the purchase of agricultural con conservation easements, but we do need to look at, at what it is that we're doing individually and say, is this the best system that we have in place to conserve water? And, and how can we deal with the demand for groundwater pumping? And as somebody said earlier, every time we put a straw into the ground and they're not metered and we understand that that's private property rights and that's all part of what is great about Yavapai County, but we need to make sure that we are making decisions that are, are for the best interest of not just tomorrow, but for our future long term, we don't want to harm the Verde. Thank you. Wiley. As Harry was talking earlier, we have to stay within the state statutes. We can't go in and purchase property at a lower price because then we're going to be liable to make up the difference. I, for one, we have a irrigation ditch right in front of my house. It's off the Mason ditch line it's from the 1890s. I am absolutely in favor of having agricultural areas. But instead of going in and buying up easements, why don't we shore up the agricultural areas we already have? help these people hang on to them and not let them get cut up into housing developments or commercial developments. To me, that would be pretty much serving the same purpose. We would still have agricultural land or green belts or however you want to talk about it, but it would be the people would maintain control of them. It would be their places. We wouldn't be spending God only knows how much money 
trying to buy green belts or conservation easements or however you want to put it. But we absolutely have to protect the Verde River. It's all we have. And I think that that's what we need to do. I think we need to shore up our current agriculture, bring this county back to what it was founded on, which was agriculture and mining. And for some reason, we've got- Time is planned. up, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, with respect uh, to the Big Chino Aquifer, yes, uh, we must stay within the boundaries of what the state legislature has um, uh, passed, but I, I do support, um, yes, bringing the agriculture conservation easement to, to maintain the land. And we've seen what's happened now with this COVID-19, our food production, so we need to support our farmers and ranchers. Uh, but yet at the same time, um, for development, um, you know, they have to prove that, that they have with the state the water to do that. So um, I'm, I am in support of that, yes. Thank you. And Steve. Thank you. I, um, hopefully you can hear me okay. My, uh, my mic uh, battery had ran out. Uh, yeah. I, do not, um, I do not support county money to further a development. I do support spending county resources to preserve what we have and natural resources. I'm okay with buying up farmland. The idea that agricultural water shares converts to guaranteed water credit is not automatic. There's a process you have to go through. It's not easy uh, and there's many, many layers. One of the things that the county does is approve subdivisions before they can get approved by the Department of Real Estate. And so there's a process there also that's in place. But to quickly answer your question, I would support it to maintain the Verde River uh, and our, our resources that we currently have. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Okay, the next question. The city of Prescott recently agreed to move forward with a plan to provide city water to Arizona Eco Development outside of city limits and as part of the negotiation in exchange for 475 acres in the Granite Dells. As a supervisor, do you support Prescott and Prescott Valley annexations for, of more county land? Why or why not? And Mary, you are up first. The answer is yes, they need to annex in that land since they are going to be supplying the water with it. It just would be better for them to have it in their city or their town. Okay, next, Harry. Is Harry muted? Do you Harry, hear me now? There we go. Yes. Okay. Now, go ahead. Um, start, start time over. Uh, I think one of the things that I see is I think it was a mistake for the city of Prescott to decide to provide water outside the city limits. Um, I think when you do that, uh, you know, possibly you get, get uh, various uh, developers like Echo Development that won't even look at annexation because they're getting water. Uh, the, the one piece right now that Echo Development is trying to get water to is outside the city limits. And probably if it ever is given water from Prescott, if it gets annexed, it's probably gonna get annexed into uh, PV, Prescott Valley. So I think there's gonna be some issues there in trying to understand, you know, can Prescott come in and provide um, requirements on homeowners on their water usage when actually the um, municipality or the uh, resident is inside another municipality. So I think that's gonna be a major issue. Um, again, I think the more annexations we have, the more sprawl we're gonna have. And uh, I think anything we can do to, to get down toward um, reasonable um, growth is something that we need to work at. Great. 
Thank you very much. Jody? Well, if the city provides the water, then there's the stipulation that they can get the affluent return flows and the recharge. The realization is that there are going to be annexations that occur on county land. That is not uncommon in any county that you're at in any state here in the United States. So that's something that we do see on a regular basis. I know that there's some annexation going on right now over on the other side of the mountain. So, you know, like she said, you know, you got to get them water. Great. Thank you. Brian? Okay, so um, if this if the city is going to provide water to these parcels, absolutely, I'd be in support of those cities annexing them. In fact, I think they should be annexed by the cities that are supporting them with the water. The reason is because it's more than just about water. Every other service that the county provides will then have to provide those those services to that area, and uh, and do it at a higher cost, which is going to raise our our taxes in the county. Um, if the city wants to develop, or if the, if the city wants to water up county par parcels and develop those like a municipality, then, uh, or the developers want to develop them like a municipality, and they need to be absorbed into those uh, municipalities. Great, thank you. Brandy. Great, thank you. So I, I would be supportive of Prescott or Prescott Valley annexing more land uh, into, into their municipality, keeping in mind that the minute that you um, are providing water to a development through a municipality, you have one hole in the ground as opposed to hundreds, and it is monitored and metered. And so we know how much water is coming out. It also becomes part of that that uh, recharge system, so it's on a sewer system as opposed to uh, separate septic tanks. And so those waters, we, we know where that usage is. And so it's a much more um, valuable way of understanding what kind of water use is, is being had with those areas. Great, thank you. Wiley? I'm all for them annexing, if that's what they want to do. But like Carrie, I would prefer that they didn't run water lines or sewer or provide services before they annex because they lose leverage in the deal. And if you have no leverage, you're not going to come out ahead. These development people like AZ Echo Development, whoever the developers are, they're going to get the better of the deal and it's going to cost the taxpayers. And I don't think that should be the approach. I think if they want to annex, they absolutely should if people approve it and then provide the services on their terms, not on a developer's term. And that's the way I feel about it. I'm all for it, if they go about it with that approach. Thank you. Sherry. Uh, thank you. Well, I know this is a controversial thing. A lot of times people say, quit letting Prescott give away our water to annexing out in, you know, from the county into the city. But I have to agree with, uh, yes, I do, because, um, you know, annexation means obviously uh, you'll be on sewer instead of septic and that you do get the recharge benefits. Uh, you also have the tier three uh, water usage, which helps control and um, limit, uh, not really limit, but people are more aware of their water use because the more water they use, the more they are charged. So that helps them recognize uh, to use less water. And it also helps to work on managing the growth. You know, you, you can manage growth better because you're uh, not just out there building, more or less not like wildcat subdivisions, but you know, you, you have a better uh, handle on it. And then um, it, it, it just helps control the building and make it more of a subdivision, like same type of deal where you don't have um, things uh, better following under the city building codes and uh, following all those things. So yes, I do support that. Thank you. Great. Steve. So I support growth paying for growth. And with that, the ability to sustain that growth. I don't believe in corporate welfare. If the city's going to make uh, an even trade, I think that's going to be their business. Would I support it? Uh, I think I would because 475 acres 
that the city maintains within the city limits uh, not only makes Yepai County a better county, but it also makes it more desirable. Great, thank you. John. Yes, as a supervisor, uh, I would support Prescott and Prescott Valley annexing uh, county land for which they're going to provide water because then they're responsible for all the rest of the services in the county residents. Uh, the county as a whole is not re uh, responsible for all the rest of the services that that development would need. That said, people that I talk to here seem to be very concerned about the sprawl. And um, I really, really, really believe that um, most people would like to see us uh, not always favor development and certainly not spend taxpayers' money uh, on development. Um, we all know that we have an awesome lifestyle here that everybody wants to uh, be part of. We either stayed here or moved here for a quality of life that we enjoy and we want to keep a hold of. But uh, nobody wants to uh, see Yavapai County turn into the place where we're sitting in traffic and staring at a sea of rooftops. So don't Maricopa or Yavapai. Great, thank you. So we had like 50 questions for you guys because I figured you wanted to be here all night, right? But um, so in the interest of time, I mean, we, we actually are scheduled till 7.30. And if we do the math on our, uh, on the order of things, if, if we all take one minute, that's nine minutes. And then if we take our two minutes for closing, that's 18 minutes. This is a math question. Um, I think we have time for one more question, unless you want to, you know, do two more or three more. But uh, I think um, we need to end, I believe, on this question. And then whatever things we didn't, you weren't able to answer questions for, you can do that in your closing. So in the interest of time and respecting your time, certainly, we're very thankful for that. Uh, we will move to, whoops, go back, go back. Go back to the COVID question. So, see, you can see we had about 100 questions. Um, so, I just don't talk that fast. Um, so, this is, uh, of course, extremely timely. Your constituents view COVID, the COVID panic, in different ways. How will you address the uncertainty of the times to include the concerns of varying public opinion now and in the future? And how would you improve public safety during the COVID-19 panic. And so we have Harry up first. Well, the Wuhan virus epidemic and associated restrictions have significantly uh, dis disrupted the US uh, economy and our local economy. Um, more to the point locally, I think there's two sides of the issue. Uh, and uh, it was recently explained by, uh, uh, probably best by the town mayor of uh, Eager. Uh, he said it's, it's something somewhat alarming how many expect and most invite a more dr uh, dramatic infringement on their pre freedoms. And he said, my response from the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has been that we err on the side of freedom. So I think that's the, the two issues that we're looking at. People uh, feel that much more should be done and others feeling that uh, it's in freedoms. Uh, my discussions with voters on this is that they feel that uh, some of them, the governor, supervisors, and mayor should enforce masks and glove wearing, and while others oppose enforcement and want to have more freedom. Obviously, we need to protect the elderly, and I feel it's important that uh, those that uh, might have been affected uh, get tested and determine if they're positive or negative. Uh, but I think it's also advisable for people to wear a mask uh, for their own protection and others. Great, thank you. Jody. I also have heard from folks here in the county about being on each side of this, this issue. So, you know, when you go out, do you wear a mask? Don't you wear a mask? And then there's the peer pressure. Well, nobody's wearing a mask. So oh, I feel like I have to take off my mask. Anybody been there? These are things that actually can help people. Maybe you don't need it. But what I told somebody was, I can do my part in this. We don't know how long this is gonna last. 
we don't know exactly who's susceptible, even though there's an idea about it. You know, I, I go by one of the old scriptures, greater love hath no man than that he would lay down his life for his friend. I may not know the person, but I'm gonna try to help them. I'm all about public safety. And somebody was saying, well, I won't vote for her because she won't defund the police. You bet I won't defund the police. I am going to make sure our sheriff's department and our public safety are supported and respected. And that's where I stand. Thank you, Jody. Brian? Okay, so the protection of our individual rights and civil liberties is the number one job of government. And while um, while there's two sides of this issue of what do we do to protect each other or how do we protect ourselves, I don't think that we should be involved in trampling on somebody else's civil rights and liberties under the guise of protecting somebody else's, um, what they envision their civil rights and liberties. So um, I, my response would be what I would do to I try to improve the public safety is protect the civil rights and liberties of the individual. If, if you don't want to frequent that business because they're not going to make you wear a mask, then don't frequent that business. If you want to wear a mask because you, uh, you feel like that is what is best for you, then by all means wear a mask or stay indoors. But at the same time, I don't think that uh, we should degrade our economy to the point where we're, um, just struggling to keep uh, keep on going. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Brandy? Great, thank you. And thank you, Jody, for your passion. I appreciated your answer on that one. Um, and I want to say that when it comes to the economics of what's happening right now, we have been, we've been telling people that you're going to be your personal health care hero. You're the only one that can really take care of yourself. So if you don't want to frequent a business because they're not practicing CDC recommendations, don't go in there. If you feel like it's best for you to wear a mask, then certainly wear a mask. If you need to stay home, then absolutely stay home. And all the while in the background, the county has been behind our residents by providing resources for food, providing resources um, for, for the uh, economics of the situation, helping to guide our businesses and what our best practices. So all the while expecting that our residents will, will be their own healthcare heroes. And in the meantime, we will provide them with as much security as we possibly can in such a difficult time. Thank you, Brandy. Wiley? Thank you. Um, this is really a very divisive subject. There's just no way around it. We absolutely have to maintain our freedoms. And it was a little hard to celebrate the independence of our, our country when you have the government telling you what you can and cannot do. That just didn't set well. But the thing of it is, is if you feel threatened, if you have underlying health issues, by all means, take precautions. Don't go out into public without your mask. Whatever you need to do to help yourself and not catch this. But we don't need to ridicule or criticize someone who practices their freedoms not to wear a mask. And I don't know how we're going to get around that. And you can't really improve on something that's the unknown. We don't know how this is gonna impact us or how long it's gonna impact us. The data jumps up and down every day. It's something different. So we have to get some kind of reliable data to know what we're doing. But the main thing, we have to pro protect our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Wiley. Sherry? Thank you. Well, I want to commend the county and the cities all coming together to join the MAX program so they can all work together and be aware of all the CDC regulations and the state regulations. So we're all on the same page, working for the same goal to protect the public. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm for personal uh, responsibility. So, you know, I, 
if you should wear your mask if you don't feel comfortable being out in the public uh, with the situation at hand. But I also want to thank our businesses because, you know, they've gone to great lengths and expense to meet all these um, CDC requirements so that people, when they do come into the businesses, they feel safe. They feel like they want to come in there and the ones that don't don't but they've gone to great expense to try and stay in business to serve the public which um, you know helps the county towards revenue so thank you thank you sherry steve the uh, personal liberty question that uh, harry and wiley both brought up i totally support 100 percent uh, but i also support the governor and what our chairman brown released saying that if you're concerned, wear a mask, use your own individual judgments. Don't go to a business that re that doesn't require a mask if you think they should. So I'm gonna err on the side of personal freedom, uh, but also common sense. Thank you, Steve. John? The smart choice is requiring masks. We can save lives and save our local businesses but to do it, we have to be smart, disciplined, and work together to stop the spread of COVID-19. It is clear that some of our leaders have misunderstood the nature of the threat. On May 12th, Governor Ducey, our state leader said, we are clearly on the other side of the pandemic, unquote, and soon lifted the shelter in place orders. Less than a month later, Arizona's epidemic exceeds Brazil and Peru to be one of the hardest hit regions of the world. Our economy cannot recover until we stop the virus. Sadly, misinformation and political posturing has turned the effectiveness of masks into a political issue. We have to stop arguing about masks and start wearing them. We have come together on this as a community. I applaud Mayor Mangarelli and Supervisor Brown for recommending masks. But the reality on the ground here is that many are not listening. Thank People you, time. And stop at red lights, both because it's safer and because of the consequences of breaking the law. The safer choice now is to Thank call- Thank you, your time is up. In public places. Thank you, John. Mary? Yes, well, first, you know, as the county, through this pandemic, our county public health department, our director, Leslie Horton, along with the free clinic of Yavapai County, director Sharon Rickman, you know, those two departments have worked tirelessly to work through the community and to do the best that they can, along with the rest of the county and the community, to give out masks, we've done testing, lots of things to continue to fight this pandemic. You know, I carry a mask in my purse all the time. If I need to wear it, I wear it. Going into certain businesses, they're required. Our Chairman Brown has put out the, or, the order to, you know, please be courteous, please be cautious and wear a mask. Great. And, oh, is that it? Oh, no, sorry, you have 50 oh, I'm sorry. Okay. loud. So, <laughs> I'll give you another, okay. ten, another 10 seconds, Mary. Okay, thank you. So anyway, going forward, um, we all need to work together on this. And you know, freedoms is definitely what this country's all about. And with freedom comes the responsibility of each of us. And we need to be responsible. Great, thank you very much. Okay, so we can uh, re stop the screen sharing. See, we're right on time. This is amazing. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're gonna forego the 50 other questions. But uh, so we will start with Jody. you have two minutes for your closing. So all those other issues that you didn't get to talk about, you get to talk about now. Well, first, thank you so much for hosting this forum. It's appreciated. Thank you. I have five major focus areas as a county supervisor that I will be looking at and circling in on. And of course, that's sound financing and administration of county government. As I mentioned, 
help public safety. I am passionate about it, Brandy. And you know, I want to thank Brian for serving on the Yavapai Justice and Mental Health Coalition. I have been there as well, and that's something that's important to me. Uh, you know, I had a father who died of suicide, and I know that has hit a lot of families here in our county. So we have some wonderful resources, and I want to make sure that that continues. I'm all about emergency services. For instance, uh, our FireWise communities, and anyone who lived through the Goodwin Fire and had impacts, you know what I'm talking about. So continue to push that. I'm big on FireWise. And of course, as a transportation professional, I'm about regional roads, trails, transportation funding. Regional collaboration is very important and working with our other governmental entities. It's about coming together. Last year in 2019, I worked with leaders across Yippapai County to develop an economic blueprint for the county. Instead of finding a lot of differences, we found a lot of commonalities and that had to do with housing. I'm looking at reinstituting the housing workforce uh, subgroup that we had. It was a task force back in 2009. And of course, looking at transportation and workforce, 30, over 30% 30 of our people go to the Valley for work. That is a brain drain here in Yavapai County. So I'll be taking the recommendations from that blueprint to be able to move forward working with uh, my colleagues on that. Uh, as serving as a councilwoman, that's the next step for me to go, go up to county supervisor. I would hope that you would consider looking at me and voting for me. It's experienced leadership coming out of this pandemic, I believe, is what we need. You can find more about me on electjodyrooney.com. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Brian, two minutes for closing. Okay, so... I stand for the Constitution and laws of the United States of America and the state of Arizona. In addition to not only standing for them, I've sworn an oath to the same that I follow daily. If elected, I will do my best to lower taxes and increase services. I will continue to love and support and protect our community and our rights. I will govern based on my religious uh, beliefs and convictions. I believe that our separation of church and state is for state to stay out of church's business, not for church to stay out of state business. I will hold ourselves accountable to the wasteful spending, to the, um, the, the inefficiencies that we have as a county, and I'll work to serve the residents of this great county. If you'd like to know more about me, I encourage you to check out my website at www.electbriansilvernail.com. On there, you can find uh, several things about me and who I am and how to contact me if you have more questions about any of my stances or positions. Like I said uh, in my opening, I'm a longtime resident of Yavapai County. I have served Yavapai County and the, the residents of this community for the last 20 years. In fact, I still serve today. Um, with that, I ask for your support and your vote on August 4th. Thank you. And again, thank you to, uh, to you all for, for hosting this and, and for the folks online here um, taking the time to get to know your candidates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Wiley, two minutes. Thank you very much and thank you for hosting this. When I'm elected, my main goal is gonna be being fiscally responsible. We need to rein in the spending. We need to take care of the citizens. Another goal is uniting not only the district, but the county. I get sick and tired of hearing of this side and that side. We're one district, we're one county, and that's how it should be. Jody speaks of regional road work. I happen to be endorsed by the vice chair of the Arizona Department of Transportation Board, Steve Stratton. They're the very people that decide where the projects are and where the money goes. I will be able to work very closely with them. Since I have a cell number, it's pretty easy. But right now with this pandemic, they're looking at a 13% deficit. They don't have money to be spending in our area. It will be several years before we do have money. They're gonna look at their new plan in September and put out their five-year plan in October. With that, we'll be able to know what kind of projects are gonna be in our area and what are gonna get taken away. 
Right now, the flex lane, which is very important from Black Canyon to Sunset Point, is still on the calendar, but it could go away. We'll know more in September. But we have to get everybody united. We have to make it one district. We need to take away the Great Wall of Mingus and make it all one, because <laughs> we're all in it together. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Wiley. Once again, I uh, did not have my glasses on. Brandy, I'm so sorry. You are next. Two minutes. It's quite all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, League of uh, Women Voters, for putting this on tonight. And I, I've said it at most of the forums, but I want to say it again, because we have a really tremendous group of candidates here. And um, I, I just think it's tremendous. We don't see this kind of civic engagement and I'm thrilled to be part of the process. And I thank all of you for uh, your integrity as we've gone through this. And I'm Brandi Bateman and I'm running for Yavapai County Board of Supervisors for District 2. And I'm committed. I'm committed to service. I'm committed to the residents of District 2 first and foremost. I'm, I'm committed to Yavapai County. I'm committed to creating partnerships with our communities, with our other counties, with our state and federal partners. Um, and I'm committed more than anything to being capable and ready to hit the ground running on, on day one with this job as I've been in the experiential part of it for the past two years. I appreciate all of you being here and um, look forward to look forward to the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brandy. Sherry? Thank you. Well, when I'm out and about, the most common thing people say to me is what's going on in our country right now um, is how are you, is Yavapai County going to keep its citizens safe? And that is the main function of the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors is to protect their citizenry. So uh, what I will do, I support law enforcement and I support giving them the tools and the resources they need to protect us first and foremost. Uh, as to District 1, District 1 deserves a supervisor that's high energy, visible, accessible, and aware of the needs of both rural and urban areas <coughs> of the district. Uh, my record and experience um, to serve with the organizations and boards that I've been on speaks for itself and shows how deeply committed I've been to the community and its people. And um, like I said, as an active community leader, my leadership strengths are having the knowledge and the leadership skills to tackle tough issues while bringing people together because we all have different opinions, we all have different visions of what we want our county to be like. So working together towards a common goal. And uh, my take charge approach to get the job done um, has led to my continued success of the many organizations and boards uh, that I'm affiliated with. Um, I speak uh, for the dedication of myself to the people of this community. My record shows that. My family and I are deeply vested in this community and I will continue to be committed to service and uh, willing to serve the people of Yavapai County and District 1. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Steve? Thank you and thanks for having the forum. Uh, I think everyone knows that um, I'm known as conservative tax guy. I'm the guy that brings the Regional Economic Development Council to our county that brings jobs and, and businesses to the area to put them on our tax rolls so we can reduce the burden on our uh, homeowners and taxpayers. Uh, at the college, I've done many things for the county, uh, but I also want to be able to take those uh, job developing, lowering property taxes to the Board of Supervisors I'm super excited. I can't tell you how many calls I get from our everyday citizens, from the past probation officers I worked with, from other law enforcement agencies. They're all interested in who's going to be on this board this coming year. $13 million budget shortfall. Uh, we need some real serious uh, people on that board to set our direction. One of the things that I like to tell people is that I'm so conservative I support 26 school districts in the county, a community college, three state colleges, my five grandkids, I'm paying all these taxes for their education. 16 years later, we have a productive member of society that's gonna go out and work and buy a home and raise a family and pay taxes, but there's no jobs here. 
they literally go to Phoenix to get jobs and employment. We're supplementing the, the Phoenix economy because we don't do economic development. I'm Steve Irwin. Go to Steve Irwin for supervisor.com. I have all my uh, notes and positions there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. John? Thank you. Thank you for having this forum. It's uh, been very educational. When I'm a county supervisor, I'm going to govern for the people that have retired here. I'm going to govern for the young families that have, are living here. I'm going to listen to what the teachers and the medical professionals have to say and govern in a way that makes their jobs easier and doable. Failed leadership has worsened the health crisis here in uh, the state of Arizona. If we've done any flattening of the curve, we flattened it into a straight vertical line. Failed leadership is destabilizing our economy. I will never be afraid to challenge state leadership and do what's right for the people of our county and the people, and who, the people who live here, our friends and neighbors and people we love in Yavapai County. We need to be involved in a government if we want it to be responsive to us. It's up to us. The way out of the predicament that we're in right now involves testing, tracing, and mass. And we need to get busy on that or we're just gonna have a disaster of the next couple of years. Thank you. Thank you, John. Mary? Oh, again, thank you very much for hosting this. Um, it has been a great experience and I uh, appreciate all the candidates here as we move forward and the election is practically around the corner. Um, you know, I, as a sitting county supervisor for District 5, have made leaps and bounds this year in the year that I have been on the board. I have a very transparent leadership record. Um, I have a good voting record. I'm not at all afraid to answer to my voting record for what I have done. It's been the right thing for the county. It's what is needed to be done to protect the community, our law enforcement. And um, I serve remembering the past in the present and moving toward a future to leave a legacy for the future. That is the job of today. And um, I appreciate the opportunity for my time on the town council for Prescott Valley, the local experience, the leadership skills that I've gained from the, being there for almost nine years, the relationships that I have made across the state and even out of the state through the country. And I look forward to you keeping me, Mary Mallory, as your county supervisor for District 5. Early ballots have gone out and August 4th 2020 is the day of election. So I appreciate your support. Please look to Mary Mallory District 5.com and you will see all my achievements and you will see all my endorsements. You will have my contact information and please call me because I don't run from people. I run to the people. Thank you again very much. Thank you, Mary. Harry. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this uh, forum, and I appreciate the opportunity to introduce myself, offer my experience, and explain what I think is important for our county going forward. I plead it to be our your low tax, less debt, and lean government candidate for county supervisor. I'm very concerned about the hit to our country or to our county that has taken from the Wuhan virus and the loss of small businesses and jobs. The increase in unemployment and increase in county taxes that will be a great burden on restoring our economy to its full health. I think we're in great trouble over the next few years from this virus. With numerous competing issues and with uncertain local government revenues, now is my, in my mind is not the time to build a new jail and justice center. We need to ensure that critical services are effectively maintained until our economy fully recovers. I believe the Board of Supervisors has a duty to be transparent in all its dealings and collaborate with other government officials and our citizens groups to bring resolution to common issues such as water, roads, and growth. I think we can do more by working together 
if we ever have to go to the legislature to try and get actions taken that are going to support this county. We have a great county with many great benefits and a great quality of life. Because of my long history here, I will do everything I can to preserve and improve on everything we have. So I look forward to the opportunity to serve you as your county supervisor for District 1, and I ask for your vote on August 4th. For more information on me and my positions, please go to my website at harryoberg.com. Have a great night and thank you. Thank you very much, Harry. Well, this concludes our um, event. I thank you very much. The candidate, all of you had wonderful answers. Yes, we're giving applause. Uh, so you, you did a fantastic job. We had a couple of little bumps in the road, but hopefully that worked out. Now, I really don't have 50 more questions, but I do have three questions. And keep in mind that all of these questions were from the citizens of Yavapai County. And if you would be agreeable, what I would like to do is send these questions out to each of you. And if you would like to respond, provide a written answer, then we can post that on our website and on Facebook. And you can certainly grab those. You know, there's some pretty tantalizing questions that uh, we didn't get to. Um, but if, if you would be agreeable to that, I'd love to be able to do that. So that way, at least you'll be able to answer um, these questions. So if, if you're OK with that, I'd like to do that. And then as many of you have mentioned, um, the ballots drop tomorrow. Um, July 8th, voting in person happens starting on, on Fair Street at July, on July 8th, so tomorrow and it ends on July 31st. Yesterday, of course, was the last day to register to vote for the primary, but if you're not, or the people watching are not registered uh, for the general election in November, you can go ahead and do that. The last day to register is October 5th. And this was streamed live on Facebook. Um, Yavapai Broadcasting in the Verde Valley is uh, making a, a copy of this that they're going to you know, clean up a little bit. And so that will be available as well. So I'd be happy to send that out to the candidates as well if you want to take a peek at yourself. And, uh, but I appreciate your time. It was a great job by all. And uh, have a good evening and stay healthy.